Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about traffic lights. And we know everyone knows about the sequence of traffic lights. And we're going to try to make one so flexible that you can come up with any kind of sequence. And this program will do it. So our standard traffic light is to demonstrate it here. We have the red, yellow, green, and we have an arrow. And we're going to have one of these at each uh, way, north, south, west, east. And we'll also include some flashing lights as well. So that gives you an idea of the traffic light. Um, and we'll have some pedestrian walks. All right, so let's take a look at the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use indirect addressing in order to control these traffic lights. And in the indirect addressing, and we'll come up with some tables. And our tables will have inputs. This gives me my car detection, uh, north, south, uh, and west, east pedestrian signals, my left turn signals. So we've set up so that we could have a multitude of uh, different ways in which we can run the sequencer. So there's all my inputs. Then I have a mask. This mask table indicates which inputs I really want to look at and ignore the rest. And it uses a logical AND to do that. And then finally we have our output sequence. And now I've color coded these um, so we can see exactly what's going on. And we're going to basically have three different types of sequence. We're going to, we're going to have a, a weekend sequence. In a weekend sequence we'll basically have red lights um, and the overlap is three. And then we have our green lights. So we notice we have north and south and west and east is separate. So we'll have two lights, then we'll go yellow and then red again. And then same token, then our east-west will go green, then yellow, and then we'll go back to red again. You'll also notice that our pedestrian walk will have walk signals, but then we'll start flashing that walk signal before it gets uh, uh, across so that they'll, they'll warn a pedestrian when the signal is going to change back to don't walk. So that's our first sequence. The second sequence is going to happen when um, we have uh, a weekday and during the weekday we don't we're off peak hours and so this is going to be based on a real time clock and what we'll see here is that we're going to flash the north uh, light then they'll both be on green and similarly we'll flash the west and then they'll both be on green and basically the sequence is then the same for our last sequence what we're going to do is we're going to turn on north and south turn lanes and sequences signals so they're going to turn and then we're going to do a red red overlap and then go back to the green. So you can see that we have three different sequences. It can be complicated if we were going to use traditional uh, programming methods. But in our case here we're going to use indirect addressing and some just some simple pointers. So let's take a look at the actual program itself and what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, these uh, signals here and what you'll notice is that Here's my red for both ways and my yellow. These are going to be my green lights. Okay. Then these are my left hand, right hand, uh, or my left turn signals for each direction. Then we have the, um, the walk signal. And then finally we have the, the walk and their don't walk signal. So with my sequence right now, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the weekend sequence. You can see it goes green, green, then it flashes don't walk, walk, and then it goes red again. So there's my greens, flash, and stop. What we'll do now is we will simulate um, the weekday. So we'll just wait for that sequence to then finish. 
and then we'll look at the sequence that's going to arrive now. So now we have a, a flashing green. Then stop. So if we look at the program, everything's controlled by one timer and it's set for one second. And basically the program's laid out in three different sections. You have all your inputs, then you have all your control logic, and then we set all of our outputs. So once I have the program set, I no longer need to um, literally do much more programming at all. All I have to do now is just modify addresses in my uh, memory areas. Thanks for listening. What you'll find is that the website will have a full explanation of the program along with all of the, um, the actual program that you can download and try for yourself.